Hey, this is Pops coming to you from the Mush Lab. The other day we ran a test where we had taken one tub we'd set up with uh, a manifold and run some CO2 lines subterranean into that tray, pumped some CO2 when we birthed the tray, and we ran another tray at the same exact time right next to it. Um, so today is a day that we're going to go ahead and open the tubs and take a look at them. We've been managing the tubs all along. Today's day 10 of these tubs. So today we're gonna to go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, we'll have the camera move in on the tub that was not treated with CO2 as it was birthed. This is a normal looking tub at day 10. So here's our first tub. Is it Pretty good performing cake. I might like to see, hold on one moment. I might like to see just a little more coverage right in here and here. But in general, we're doing pretty good. We have some nice hyphal knots down in here, some good rhizomorph. But in general, the cake's looking very healthy and performing pretty darn well. So, before I put my lid back on, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little fan. This is our fresh air exchange we talk about all the time. So we'll do this. I would also mist my sidewalls and my lid if I needed to right now. These look pretty good. And I'll be putting this tub away shortly. Might mist it if I need to then. Thank you, cameraman. We're going to move to the second tub. This tub is the tub that, as I mentioned before, we, we actually treated with the CO2. So, oh, let me leave this one open just so we can compare them. Here we go. And the cameraman will move in on this tub. We'll get, woo -hoo! Okay, interesting. This will see a very interesting difference. You're gonna see that it, it, it's almost clear to me. This is where the manifold is that we pumped in the CO2 and the CO2 has lines that are running and ending at different places below the surface, four different spots. And believe it or not, those are almost the spots that I'm seeing deader uh, substrate. And it's almost as if the white area on this cake, the hyphal areas and the more rhizomorph areas, seem to be just a little bit stronger than on this cake. So this has some high performing areas, but not nearly as dense or the coverage. Almost as if that CO2 did some poisoning below the surface and didn't give us a kind of performance that you know you're looking for so that'll take care of the reveal on these two um in the future we're going to take this same tray after this one's fruited out and we're going to run it with oxygen below the surface and see how that does versus the co2 bets are it's going to perform a lot different so that's really really cool thank you cameraman i'm going to put our lids back on we're going to do one final thing just Something that we do usually on day 10. So I set this up so the camera can see it as well. Usually on day 10 when we've opened up our, our tubs and we're looking at them for the first time. Because we're getting ready to move them towards fruiting, which is where we're at with these. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a humidity bath. That fog, be nature. We're going to take the fog and just let it roll across the mountainside. And just into the crevices and into the areas that nat nature naturally has her little mushrooms. That's what we're gonna do here um, in our laboratory setting. So oftentimes the tubs that I run won't have the grill on them. They'll just have a polyfill where I'm able to just pop, take my little polyfill right out and then I'll take my hose and I'll stick it pop right in there and I'll give it a humidity bath. How often do I do that, Pops? I usually only do it one time during the fruiting. 
you'll find you humidify you. We like to do it, it's cool. And it is, but you can overdo this and you end up saturating the cakes. So this is a very good thing to do because probably in the lifetime of this mushroom, it's gonna experience a fog bath once or twice, but it doesn't get it every day. And it certainly doesn't get a fog bath four times a day. So we wanna really be moderate in our use of these. Um, when I'm running the tub with the grills, I'll just go ahead and crack the lid and get myself some fog build up inside here. I'll always di direct to when I'm using a humidifier, I'll always direct it up towards the lid rather than down towards the cake because you'll want, you don't want direct contact of water or things like that to the cake. So let's turn this puppy on. Camera catching that. That has got to be cool. Right? So, boom, boom. We point her up. And we wait till we get nice and full of fog. And then we'll trap it. And that's all we have to do. We'll look at this again tomorrow. filling up pretty good and again I never overdo this it's fun it's neat and it, it's not just because it's fun there's certainly an, an, an absolute benefit to doing this it's getting oxygenated air into the tub and this is true humidity right here look at that tub bring the camera in here for a moment look at that tub can you imagine if you're a mushroom or the the mycelium network in there you have got to be happy. Okay. So, we would lock that up. Again, treat the other tub the same exact way once we're through with this film. But that's Pops at the Mush Lab. Signing off.